Hey everyone, today we are in Massachusetts. The weather is pretty nice. It's now 74 outside and we're looking at a couple possible beaver issues. The first one is right here, which is potential, and the next one is definitely a problem. So the culvert pipe is right here. Already looking at it, doesn't look like there's gonna be a problem, but we gotta get out and look at it anyways since the water is pretty close to the road. This time of year it's not a problem, but come winter that would cause frost heaves, but I'm sure by then it would be taken care of. And it looks like there might be another culvert pipe further up at that hump, but it's completely unnoticeable. All right, so this is the first pipe. Here's the entrance of it. Do we gotta get on the big high boots here? There is definitely flow, but it's clogged with all this slop. Look at that. We can get some of this out right now. Look at that, it already started flowing. It was all just stuck against that stick. This culvert is rotting though. Let's see if we can beat that surge across the road or not. So there is actually something here. I don't know if we're beating it or not. Yeah, just that one handful made this thing start going a lot more than it was. Kind of wish I showed that. But I can tell by the sludge. Honestly, this thing may even be plugged up again by the time we even drive by it again in like an hour. Now further up the road, maybe two miles or so, we have a pipe that is severely blocked and there's like a three foot difference in water level from one side to the other. Now I'm just taking a little walk up here because it looks like more possible pipes. See up there where that hump is and you can see a crack in the road. I thought there may have been a third, there is not. So right here, yes, there is definitely a pipe here at this hump. The same exact swamp. Here it is, very small pipe. And there is definitely current coming out of that thing. And there are a bunch of branches all over the ground from them recently doing trimming, probably last fall. And here's the intake of the pipe. Don't really see much slime here. And this one is working perfectly. Just a little bit of slop right there. And here is the grate that we can put back into place a bit. Look at that. And some swamp gas. That thing's a little broken. That's just so the beavers plug, pl clog it up against that rather than inside the pipe where it's basically impossible to get to. So with this one here, it's not ever gonna flood down there at that other one because if, even if it gets plugged up again with all that debris, it's all coming up here. Now that that one down there is open a bit more, this one will probably start flowing a lot less. And somebody lost their license plate. I wonder if this license plate is from the bumper over there on the edge of the road. There is a license plate right here. All right. I can tell just walking back, this road was recently underwater from this. Two undersized pipes. Can even hear some tree frogs starting. We're back to the other pipe and look at that giant wall of debris. We'll check on this one on the way back. So you guys all saw about two weeks ago during that camping video, I broke off the back strut of the car or shock and the shock is now back on and reused but it ripped out of the hub assembly and they said it's just about impossible to re-thread cast iron. So the whole hub assembly was replaced and they ordered an aftermarket sensor for it and the car didn't like that so I have to get a genuine sensor put in. And for the time being, I just found out today, without that sensor working, this car will refuse to go into four-wheel drive. 
So for the time being, I can get stuck, so I gotta watch where I go. All right, we are coming up on the issue. Let me show you. See right here where these guardrails are? Look how high the water is on the left compared to the right. You can see the water blasting out into this other side. Unfortunately, we cannot park there because that's for the fire department to pump water out of that body of water. So that's definitely beaver related, the water being that high on the left. And look right here. The water is like only about a foot below the level of the road to the left compared to the right. I don't see any evidence that water's been crossing, but I know it's not too far from becoming that. This might be the spot we're going to have to park, but I want to first drive by that one more time slowly. That little pond right there drains down into this. There is no pipe or anything between those. Now you can see how high the water really is. There's a painted turtle out on that log. There's a little increase here in elevation, but there is not a pipe I already checked. Right here is pretty low, very close to the water line. This right here, this high spot, might be another pipe. I really don't know. But is this a parking space? Is it that convenient? It looks like it is. It looks like we can park right here. This is probably used by fishermen and stuff. All right, so I already got my big high boots on because I feel like we're gonna be able to do something here. So this side here, looking down at it, the water doesn't look that high, and that's because this area is used to it. It is Massachusetts, and they're not the greatest with their maintenance. But you can tell by the little shrubs and bushes, it is a little bit high, but I can tell it's been at that level for quite a while. So here's the culvert here. And you see other people have been unclogging it. You see, look at all this debris here, especially right there. I actually, driving overhead, thought that was the pipe, a big beaver dam over it. But now I'm seeing right here, look, two culvert pipes, two reinforced concrete pipes. And I'm seeing now, this will actually be pretty easy, depending how far am I gonna sink into this mud. Just the perfect level. Look at this. We can drop this thing by two feet. And yes, this is definitely beavers. And the beavers are definitely active. Definitely this time of year. It's starting to get warm out. Let me climb up top here. We're going to go look at the situation on the other side. I'll walk back to the vehicle. Get my rake. And get camera number two. As you see... There is a good amount of water coming out already. Because this is such a big area, I don't expect water levels to rise fast. So I'm just gonna set up camera number two right here. Stick it down deep enough. Yeah, look, that's actual riverbed. Look at that, nice sandy bottom with rocks. Pretty stable too. And here's the exiting end of the two pipes. Yeah, we'll get those things almost to capacity. Well we'll get them about halfway to capacity, I should say. There's no way we'll get them at capacity. The entrance is not underwater. But there is like two feet of water being held up. This thing here I already explained is for the fire department. They pump out of here. And we're gonna come over here, because it's possible there's more pipes. The way the guard rail set up, this bigger hump in the road, it's very well possible. Nope. Doesn't look like it. Oh, there's frogs out already. I just saw one jump. Some iron oxidizing bacteria. Walk over to this side of the hump. Confirm it's not a pipe that's just way under. I don't think it is. 
All right, let's go get the rake out. Hey everyone, on camera number two, I'm gonna leave you guys right here. Um, this far away from the pipe because I don't know how much current is gonna start blasting out of that and I don't want the camera to go down. This camera is waterproof supposedly for like 12 hours at a certain depth and whatnot. But every time I've got it wet before it messes up the microphone for quite a while and refuses to charge. So we're gonna run back over to the other side of the road and get started. Here we go. Woo. All right, everyone, here we are on the other side. The water is almost too deep for my boots, but not quite. I think I'm going to start off with my hands a bit. Actually, this might work perfect on the grate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to need my hands. There's some big, pretty big pieces of beavers jammed in there. Rake is not a good solution for this, and I'm already going to be covered in mud. And fishing line. Not a fish hook, but we do have a weight. Look at the size of these things inside the grate. We are unable to pull that thing off. We'll just chip at it. Keep going, nice. already creating an undertow, bringing more debris over from the bottom. This is a very fresh dam. I don't think it was like this all winter. The water's still very cold. Massachusetts this week is supposed to have a weird stretch of weather in the upper 80s for a couple days. That's not normal for April, but next week it'll be back down to seasonable 50s. Oh, my shirt's all wet. These are not even doing anything. They're just leaning there. Yeah, we can put these back after. Maybe we can get the whole grate off. I thought these were driven in pretty deep. Oh my gosh, I bet that looks awesome on the other side. There we go. Let it all pass. This grate is only here to stop the beavers 
from building inside, not to stop the stuff from going in. All clear, 100% on that side. Now let's open the other side up. Wow, that's so much current. But you know beavers, they'll have it plugged up again tonight. Guaranteed if they're active. But I'll also be back at some point to check on this and maybe unclog it again. But I'm gonna give it like a good month, at least, before I come back. These pipes are not the biggest, but they're moving a ton of water. Look at that, we got it back down, seated perfectly. This grate is actually going down like this much lower than the pipe, which is ideal, perfect. Now that thing's pretty heavy, but we're gonna put these things back the way we found it, leaning against it, which will stop the beavers from pulling it down, because these are very thick metal. These are not normal signposts. These are like, vintage ones, and back in the day, everything was built stronger. Very heavy post. Oh, but that undertow, we already got a couple sticks, and I imagine this pond probably also has that slime. That other pond was smaller, so the sun heats it up faster, and it grows sooner. This big pond takes a while after the winter to heat back up, so it'll take a bit longer for all that slime that we saw at the first place to come, you know, and start jamming this up. Maybe we'll get to see that in about a month. Most ponds in Massachusetts get that sludge, and it will clog it up like an hour after you do it, if you got the right current. In a situation like that, it's good when the pipe is underwater and it has a structure above it because it'll sit there, but it won't get sucked under, if you know what I mean. Wow. I'm so happy that we were able to get this thing 100% open. Put that up on the guardrail. We'll grab it right after we look at the other side. I did not flood my boots, but this shirt, which is a little bit too big for me, did get wet and it's acting like a siphon if anybody has ever gone ahead and taken a paper towel, you drape it inside of a drinking glass, it'll drip all over the table. Same thing happening here, it's slowly siphoning it into my big high boots. Now it is time to go and look at the other side of the road. Let's go see what we got been a lot of school buses going by or there were I think school just got out around here so you see we didn't get that much debris off good amount this is definitely the biggest blockage of the year so far oh my gosh look at the other side wow here's what it looked like before And here's what it looks like after. Massive difference. Those beavers are gonna be very angry when they have two less feet of water. But Massachusetts fishing game could easily put up a beaver structure. The beavers could have their home. And, cause that structure right there, that's more of an old school primitive structure. The idea behind it is the beaver will clog the grate instead of the pipe. Meaning it's very easy to unclog but you have to unclog it pretty often. That's the only downside to it. A newer structure, they need to have more surface area, so it takes the beavers forever 
Best example is the triangular grape culvert, something like that. Or some places have a long tube going out into the middle of the pond with a gigantic funnel-like structure that pours in without making much noise. When beavers don't have a lot of noise to attract them, they tend to leave it alone. And look at this big whirlpool going around, going around. Here's what this place looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. Pretty big difference. Yep. So, the area over there, that's a very big area. There will definitely be a noticeable drop in water by the time the sun goes down, but immediate, like in an hour or so, not really. So I think we might pack it up and call it a day. We're gonna go down the street and look at the slimy place. I'm gonna get the rake, and just for fun, I wanna scoop all that out. It'll benefit the pipe, because it'll, it'll end up in there eventually, but that is so much fun, skimming slime like that off. I, like I was mentioning, if you could hear me over all the water, this pond is probably going to explode in that slime this week because it's going to be upper 80s for temperature, which is unheard of for April. But that other pond has been heating up in the sun. It's been warm this week, so it happened faster. This is going to take longer to heat up, much deeper, bigger pond, but I expect this to be pretty slimy if we come and visit in like a month or so. I think it will be. But that thing is fully open. That is just awesome. I thought this was going to be a pretty challenging one. Because driving by, I thought this was the blockage. Which looks like a pretty old beaver dam. With a bunch of plants, meaning roots. Sometimes you need an axe to get through ones like that. But obviously someone did maintenance. This stuff has been thrown here by the looks of it a couple years. It's rotting. You can tell the sun has been breaking it down. Nothing recent has been fished out of here. Maybe the beavers just left it alone for a while. But everything I'm seeing here, it's pretty recent. I think some of this, most of it was done in the spring, a little bit in the fall before the pond freezed over. As soon as the pond defrosts, that's when beavers can become active and start building dams. But typically they wait until it's really warm out. Beavers' most active time in my experience is after a gigantic summer rainstorm. That's their favorite time to start building. It's a little too early for big structures. But something like this, look at all the debris and slime, especially with that grating structure. They can take like an hour and push all the sludge right up against it. Big seal. But I was amazed. Look at this piece. That's like 10, maybe longer feet. I don't know how well I got this from my dash camera, but I'm going to try to show you a before shot of driving over this because now we have a lot of aeration. Here's what it looked like before. You can see the water blasting out into this other side. And here's what it looks like after. We're gonna take a little walk down the road now and we're gonna see if there's any noticeable difference. We're gonna go down here where it's extremely close to going over the road. And I'm sure we'll see something slight, whether it be a half an inch or something, but that could always be disputed as the wind pushing little tiny ripples against it making that mark and that is pretty cool look at that we have a tiny little geyser of water right there crystal clear too in the middle of all this iron oxidizing bacteria what that is from is what I've mentioned in the past roads are not meant to be dams and they're not built to be so either you got that water that's almost to the top of the road, and it's seeping through here. It's being forced through the road, and somehow it's coming out of there, path of least resistance. I have no idea. Maybe, you know, bedrock always is a big player in that. But who knows? I have no idea what's underneath this road. Maybe this hump is here because it's difficult bedrock. It's hard to say. I can already see some of that slime. You see that green tint? Yeah, this place will be covered in it probably by next week. The high beaver levels have also created, look at the erosion here. You see the road is starting to slip into the water because it's so high. This guardrail 
someone hit that, it's going to give much sooner since the ground is so soft. I see a bunch of lily pads starting to grow out of their bulbs. Those will be up on the surface probably by next week. They'll grow pretty fast in this type of weather. So up here, we already determined is not a second culvert pipe, just another hump. And right here is, this is probably the closest spot. See this? During storms, I would not be surprised at all. Oh my gosh, that's not a culvert, but this is a culvert pipe. Wow. There's a good amount of water coming out of this one too. I don't even think it has much of a blockage, but there's definitely something out there. Good thing I walked down here. This was like completely hidden. No evidence from up above except for that crack. But this whole road is full of cracks and falling apart. So here we are out on the end of the pipe. There is a little bit of debris, see that? But yeah, that thing's 100% open. Barely anything. Oh, but we have created a whirlpool. We definitely increased its capacity. Wow, look at that. Look at that whirlpool action. That is so cool. Look at it sucking the little pieces of debris down. Let's give it a leaf. Woo. That's a nice looking whirlpool. Now let's see how much it increased just by getting that little piece of debris out of there. Yeah, this is a, this is a great example. Just the smallest blockage and preventative maintenance can improve a ton. All right, so the big hump in the road. Now there's no pipe here. Just a low class individual pulled over and dumped a bunch of garbage out their window. But I want to take a walk all the way down here because we saw that one little pipe there. There could be more hidden out here. I want to walk down to the end of the swamp. There's another little low spot with a crack going across. That's another potential pipe. At least the drivers are being nice. They're going way around me walking on the side of the road. Look at that, more of that slime. Oh, a frog. You see this area where there's not deep water? The sun heats it up extremely fast, so algae and slime grows much faster. That bigger area is colder. It'll take a little longer. I do not see another pipe. Well, I'm gonna walk to the end. See, we got at least two feet of water higher on that side. And by the look of it here, this was higher maybe during the spring thaw, which was only about a week ago. This area still had snow. A lot more slime. This place is going to be a gigantic frog haven soon. Now over here is where I saw that painted turtle. You can tell by all this grass. Usually this area is not flooded, but it's been flooded for a while. Look at this sinking right here all next to the road. All it takes is someone pulling over and not knowing they're going to sink pretty deep. All right, there's no more pipe. Let's get back in the vehicle and go down the road. See, it dropped maybe two inches potentially or it's just being sucked up like my paper towel example in all the dry grass. Despite the creosote, it will eventually cause rot to that pole. Creosote usually doesn't sink all the way into the pole, so a lot of times you'll be out exploring and you'll find an old telegraph pole or telephone pole and you have a big hollow creosote covered apart because it only sinks in about an inch or two. The middle is still allowed to rot if water gets into it. 
but it definitely helps. I think at some point this road may have water going up onto it, especially with the beavers plugging that thing up. You see the grass is kind of pushed over from cars driving through water, splashing it like crazy. I don't think a sizable puddle is able to flood here. It looks like it would just trickle. See, there's really not much of a barrier. So it's possible the water was up here during the spring thaw. I already hear lots of tree frogs. There'll be so many tonight. Look at this. This wasn't here when we first got on the scene. Look at all the water trickling here. The water over here where we started draining has already dropped enough that there's a big noticeable current coming out of this bog. Despite all the little ripples, that whirlpool is still doing well. What do you guys suppose this is for? Just right there against that rock. And here's where the fire department can pump out of. That's probably drawing really deep. And I imagine they would have a very good structure out there. But I really don't know where. I don't see anything. But we got a great amount of current coming out. Look at this. Yeah, I just walked about maybe 20 minutes or so down there. It doesn't look like it's slowing down. We already lost a couple inches of water on the other side. This is going faster than I expected. All right, everyone. We are now pulling back up where all that slime is. All right, put the flashing lights on and right here at the pipe. You can pull off the road a little bit. Let's have some slimy fun. Wow, there is so much stinky swamp gases. Well, not much we can do there. It's not as thick as I thought. It's not sifting out very easily. But that's a good thing. It's not very thick, meaning it'll take much longer to cause a problem. Hey everyone, today I'm back at this lake drain culvert again. And it's summertime, so you've got all this sludge growing on the surface of the water. And it's all getting pulled over here towards the grate. See the suction I just created? It's drawing more in here again. See, it's gonna clog up immediately. You see? That just became part of the clog again. And you, can, you can really see how mushy it is. It just mushed down and it's spread out across the entire grate, you know? Beavers don't have much fear for some reason. They must be used to all the fishermen around here.
All right, everyone, I hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.